Hello, what is up gamers? Tiggy here and today I am here to give you another deck showcase. So, there has just been a massive change in the PvP world spectrum, which is that Dragon Towers have been implemented. So no longer will we just be getting absolutely run down by very, very annoying uh, aggro Maiev bullshit decks. We can now play mid-range and heavy big boys without having to worry about our tower just getting absolutely zerg down. And for that I have a new deck to showcase which is Lord Baron Rivendare. So Baron was incredibly strong before uh, in an aggro matchup actually because his constant pressure from the skeletons but believe it or not he's still he's still really strong. As it turns out he's just stupidly overtuned and does way way too much. So let me go ahead and show you guys the deck list. So, big boy in the front, Baron Rivendare, what does he do? Basically, he is a tank fast unit, so he runs up and he hits things, and he's armored. And as you can see, yeah, melee, one target, only. Tank, armored, elemental too. That's really stupid. I, like, genuinely, it's very dumb that he also does elemental damage and he's fast. His stats are pretty, pretty solid, 4,000 health. That's like twice that of a ghoul, a little bit less than a stitches. DPS is alright. Fast. Like what? He's just so well statted. But more notably, periodically summon skeletons at your buildings you control. Just always. He doesn't have to be on the board, he just always spawns skeletons. Passively. Very powerful. Uh, some of his talents. Death pack, sacrifice nearby skeletons to be healed. Excuse me. I've never seen anyone use it. I don't think it's very good. Skeletal Frenzy, nearby LA Skeleton to gain Bloodlust. I actually played against this recently, and it was surprisingly effective, but Chill of the Grave is by far his best talent. Turns the mages he summons into Skeletal Mages instead of Warriors. Skeletal Mages are way, way better than Warriors. Uh, most Warriors will walk up to pretty much any unit, especially if it's ranged, and just die without doing anything. Skeleton Mages are almost guaranteed to at least get one hit in. And if you just have backland skeleton mages going in with your push, they apply a chill effect, which is a very powerful effect because it slows down the attack speed of everything, including towers and move speed. So very powerful to just have that talent, which I thankfully have. Uh, and let's get into the deck itself. So we're going to be running Necromancer. Necromancer is an incredibly uh, versatile four cost unit. He does. Let's go ahead and go to the stats. Single target damage. He's ranged, he's elemental, and he summons two skeletons to move along with him. Uh, his damage is very, very high. His health is not that good. He's pretty slow. His, his speed is medium, but he has to summon units, which he stands still and does an animation for, so he's pretty slow to get moving. So note, it dies to blizzards, it dies to... I still don't know the name of this card. The safe pilot, the gnome, the gnome bomber. Uh, pretty solid overall does very well into gargoyles among other things because yeah it, it kills tanks very well it loses to abomination very hard though uh his talents are cult of the damned on kill summon a skeleton this one's actually pretty good as it turns out uh when you play this as a defensive unit to counter pushes or even just in a big swarm if you're winning the push if you win the engage you will just come out with a bunch of extra skeletons so the necromancer can only have two of his own skeletons out but with this talent, he could have additional skeletons. And if his two main ones that he summoned dies, he resummons those ones. But he does not resummon the ones that he gains from killing units. Next up, Jeweled Skulls. Definitely the best one. Summons mages instead of skeletons. I don't have this one. Very unfortunately. I really, really want it. So I'm going to be trying to get my Necromancer to Epic just so I could unlock this stupid talent. But that's going to take forever at this point. But yeah, he summons mages instead of regular guys. Very powerful talent. Uh, we just talked about how mages are way better than regular warriors, and again, specifically an abomination matchup, which is very strong unit that beats up pretty much any range DPS you could think of. It allows him to win because the abomination, if at least from a range, will pull the mages first and then usually take one or two hits to hit them, and he just summons another mage, so it saves the necromancer rather than him just getting pulled immediately. And finally, breath of the dying on death summon five skeletons, worthless. Don't take it. Pick pick the other two. Cult of the Damned is honestly not too bad, but just go for the other one if you can get it. Next up, Abomination. I like to call him Stitches. Very powerful 6 drop, very big, meaty boy. Let's check out his stats real quick. So he's tank, AoE, uh, melee, and hook. Hook is a unique ability, which is that he will hook a ranged 
unit over to him and smack him. Let me, I think it shows it off here in the video. So watch this, here's a group of melee, let's AoE to all of them. And then he pulls the Talzdengar right up to him and just beats him up too. <clears throat> so this 6,000 health goes by pretty fast against swarms among other- Oh, it's actually way more, it's 14,000 health, my bad. Uh, it goes down pretty fast despite how big it is, but still very powerful unit. His damage is not that good. Uh, for talents, he has three honestly very good talents. Any of them are good. Uh, Noxious Presence, just poison. So if you got like an Uther deck, he cannot beat the Uther uh, armored guy's push. He does not do any damage to armored units essentially, but adding poison makes him pretty solid to that matchup. Cannibal makes him incredibly good at defense because a five second stun is very, very powerful. It's also just good during a push because when you when he drops to half health, it just stuns all the units hitting him. Alone, this doesn't, do, this doesn't do too much except under tower, but it's very good in a group to just stun the entire opposing army. And finally, Fresh Meat makes him deal double damage on the next attack after hooking a target. This is surprisingly very good despite his low damage because he has very big, he has decent damage on his main big swing, and this allows him to basically one shot a lot of units he otherwise wouldn't. I don't believe Stitches does well into skeletons, but he does a you know certain level thresholds one shot him anyway. Very powerful six drop. Next up, by the way, these are our slots undead, undead, and unbound. Next up, we're running safe pilot. Why? Because it's OP. It's just it's just so good. It's just so unbelievably strong. My safe pilot is not even that high of a level. I run it anyway. I don't even have a talent for her yet. Run it anyway. What is it? Ranged AoE Elemental Unbound. So just elemental damage, pierces armored. AoE damage, very good. It's ranged and good range, very good. And before you that, it's unbound. So you just summon it wherever you want and it does damage. Where you summon it, does a bunch of damage where you summon it. 786, 785 I mean. This is so much, this is so much damage. Uh, basically, you drop this on any, almost any ranged DPS except like Huntress and she will just kill it on fall. Her talents. This one is worthless. No much but Nizer Polymer for the first blast of the target, whatever. That's only good if you're using her as a backline DPS. Coming in hot makes her range form not as useful, but more as just a very solid uh, blast if you want to control the board. And then her best one by far is Damage Cloaking Device. Deploy from an explosion with Stealth and Ambush. So, when she drops on, let's say, a Necromancer, which we're running, she doesn't have enough damage to kill him with the blast, with the, the explosion itself. But with Gnomish Cloaking Device, she will be invisible, so the Necromancer will not immediately turn and kill her, which will happen otherwise, because she, the Necromancer will survive the blast. But she'll be invisible, and she will target him immediately, shoot him, deal extra damage because of the ambush, wins the trade all out. Very powerful. There's a note coming in hot also because the burn will kill units like a Necromancer, but... You know, go for the Nobish uh, cloaking device if you can. Next up, Unbound, we have Skeleton Party. Uh, very, very powerful card, deck, unit, whatever. Uh, melee, Squad, Unbound, Elemental, Frost. Frost again, very useful. Elemental again, Pierces. Uh, pierces, Armored. As a note, only the Mages are Elemental, the regular Undead are not. Melee, but there's also a range in there because it's a Squad, and Unbound, put it wherever you like. Uh, the damage and all that, it's it seems low, but it's a lot because there's five of them. And, you know, just a little showcase, yeah. Spawns it in, see three mages, two melee. So for talents, we have five men, corpse run, ritual of rhyme. So originally I had thought corpse run was not that good, but upon further consideration, I think I've decided that corpse run might be better than five men, but honestly, it's pretty interchangeable. Uh, the mages are really powerful, so I noticed that losing a mage actually is a, kind of a big deal. The tank is not that tanky, because he's still just a skeleton, it's just armored with a little bit more health. Rogue is no point, there's no point in giving it stealth, and then the priest is just a downside, to be honest. Healing worthless skeletons does not do very much. So 5 man's not that good, actually. Corpse run, the levels come in handy. The little bit of damage is honestly better than nothing. And there's Ritual of Rhyme. Ritual of Rhyme is, what I th is very unique, because it completely changes the way you use the card. Uh, you can't just like summon it to go push because they'll stay still. They become very good at defending a location, but they're also pretty good at just like assisting in a push just because five skeleton mages has a lot of slow and ranged DPS on stuff. I think this is probably the best one. It again, them not moving isn't too big of a difference if you want to use it for the way you would regularly use a skeletal party. You just have to position it a bit differently. 
and it makes the playstyle a little bit more unique. I've been playing with it the whole time I've had it. I think it's very good. I don't even really want to mess with the other talents too much. I suggest that. Next up, Banshee. Banshee is really good at taking out big meaty targets like Stitches. Unless the Stitches has actually the fresh meat talent, which I think most of them don't run, she will beat them. She can take over Karens, she can take over Ren Blackhands, she can take over, not Sylvanas I don't think, but a good chunk of just these really powerful expensive cards and then suddenly they're on your side which is a huge gold trench, you know, very powerful. It beats out on those single target trades. And why does she do this? Because she's ranged one target possession. She charges into the unit and if she touches him, she turns into him. It's not that generous. And if it doesn't go off, you are down four gold, which is very expensive. That's very bad. It's very, very bad. Very little health. She does pretty quickly. Uh, and then medium to fast. It's medium, but she becomes fast when she's dashing towards him. So let me just go ahead and show it off here. Here's a Molten Giant. You will never see this happen. But yeah, very good counter to Molten Giant. No one runs that card. But it works on Abomination too, which is good. For talents, Soul Eruption, Unholy Frenzy, Will and Necropolis. Soul Eruption is not bad. Detonate is it's good if you want to just throw her into a group of units and then have her possess whatever and blow up. It's not that it's not that bad. Unholy Frenzy also bloodlusting it pretty good, especially if you had like arranged units by some by some chance. The Will Necropolis, which I have, which is I believe the best one, because a lot of times by the time, especially this deck, you get to the unit, a Frost Mage or something's been hitting it, it might be down to half or even lower HP. Sometimes you get like a sliver of health and your Banshee will possess them. Excuse me. And that's really unfortunate to just have like this one hit from death unit just what gets hit by the Banshee. Uh, Will and Acropolis completely negates that issue. It becomes very convenient. It adds ease of use to this already difficult to use of, uh, unit. And finally, you got your standard Blizzard. I don't know why I just swapped it. Whatever. Uh, just a spell. AoE Frost Elemental. It's a very strong area damage overall. So... If they stay in the whole thing, they take this much damage, which kills Necromancers, among other units. Uh, most ranged DPS and any swarm will die to this. Uh, the one exception being Huntress, I think, out has more health than this. How it works, let's just watch. Just plop it down. This damage slows everything inside of it, and then, you know, if they stay in the whole thing, they take a ton of damage. Which they usually will stay in the whole thing. Talents, Cold Snap, this is the best one. Freeze enemy troops in place. Does that work against air units for some reason? I don't think. I've noticed. They kind of walk through it, but most of them will just die anyway. I can't think of a single air unit besides a gargoyle that can walk through a full blizzard. So it doesn't hit them, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, Ice crown, worthless. Just summons an extra blizzard at your base, but it's like centered on it, so it only hits like melee units. It's not that useful. And then brittle ice. Enemies within take 30% additional damage from physical sources. Only physical, not elemental. I don't know how good that is, I'm gonna be honest. Maybe there's some thresholds that helps you beat during a push. But usually usually you just kinda of wanna drop Blizzard on like a push without your units being there. Or you might want to. I don't know. Cold Snap, very good overall. I recommend that. So, this is what I believe to be one of the stronger variants of a Baron Rivendare deck. It just runs a lot of good units right now. He's got very nice slots too. Two undead. There's a lot of good undead units. There's a lot of good other units too, but like specifically like Necromancer, uh, I think Abomination now. Abomination now is very strong. Uh, and then something like Skeleton Army, all very good undead units that you can run in a lot of different decks. I'm running Banshee because I think Abomination is very strong right now and Banshee beats Abomination. I also think there's just going to be a lot of higher health units overall. So Banshee is good when there's higher health units in the meta because she takes over them. It's a good trade. Uh, you run the Gnome Bomber because it's just an overstated card. You put it into every single deck you can. It's just too good. Uh, and yeah, Blizzard just my one control spell. If you want to run, I've seen a lot of people actually been doing Arcane Blast instead. I believe they usually take it with the Arcane Power talent. Uh, just because at certain thresholds, it basically does the same damage as a Blizzard, I believe? No. I don't know. I've seen other people running Arcane Blast. It does pretty well against smaller AoEs, but I like Blizzard because it 
smaller health units I mean, but I like Blizzard because it deals with a lot of those medium HP units like Necromancer, which are the backliners. Other cards you can try running, Gargoyle. Uh, so the new turrets do elemental damage and they do a ton of damage when something is up close. And Gargoyle is an armored unit which becomes irrelevant and it gets right next to the turret to hit him, which means it takes a ton of damage. But it doesn't matter because if a Gargoyle gets next to the enemy turret, it'll still just absolutely 1v1 it. Very powerful card right now for that reason. Uh, this is a good trade-in. Huntress, one of the best cards in the game by far. She has so, so much health that it just barely survives Blizzard. It's not actually so much health. It's actually a lot less than I thought it was, but still, it survives Blizzard where Necromancer doesn't. And it is a lot of DPS in an area, and she is at the very edge of the tower's range, so a solo Huntress against the tower will not take that much damage at all. She will just kind of casually hit the flame turrets without any issues. I really, really, really didn't like the guard turrets that we had before, but the one thing they did way better is definitely kill Huntresses better. So there's some flex cards. If you're going to remove anything, I'd say Banshee is the first one I go, and then Abomination if you think Baron is a good enough tank on his own, which he totally is. And if you just don't want to wait for six mana, cheapens your deck up quite a bit. Uh, and yeah, that's the deck showcase. Let's get some games in and hopefully you guys enjoy. I've been having a lot of fun with this deck and hopefully you guys can too. Thank you. All right, we have found our first game for the showcase. Let's see what we're up against. Again, we got these new dragon towers. This my own? He didn't get the memo. He didn't get the memo. They completely nerfed it. So here's a cool little trick with the skeletal mages. You put it right here under the bridge. They hit both. Very interesting. See that? Catch them both. Next up, we'll just drop a stitches with a necromancer here. Let him push. This is going to clear the entire skeleton, but we don't really mind. Drop you here. Always hit that switch so that your miner goes this way afterwards. Blizzard kills our necromancer. Stitches pulls the huntress all the way up. Nice. See, if I had the meat hook talent, I think he would have just one shot her there. Doesn't really matter, but it would been cool. We'll drop a possession or what's her face down there already. This guy is just bad at the game. I'm gonna put the skeletons back so they'll get the chest as soon as they show up. We're gonna get three worgen. We'll take it. Look at that. Absolutely melted my Baron. Baron would have literally ended the game beforehand without these flame cards. Look at this. Watch. So much damage. Huge. Pull that closer. Doesn't matter. Once again, Huntress is just going to take that. We have another Necromancer push. It's probably going to counter it with a very simple Blizzard. Uh, let's to drop our Lord Rivendare, Baron, sorry, down here to take out the Huntress for us. I don't know why he keeps dropping the Miner like that. We'll drop you over here, just as a little bit of range DPS on the side. It's good enough to matter. And I think we could safely drop you here, just for a little bit of additional support with the frost before. The frost is so effective against these turrets, by the way. Look how little damage they do here. Freeze, 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 freeze. Ah, uh, not quite. Drop you down here. Hopefully you don't die to Huntress. Huntress destroys Necromancer usually. I think we'll be fine. I think this is actually stronger than it was before, because, yeah, <laughs> the turret actually is worse at killing them before than they used to be. I will drop you here. He drops an earth elemental. Please stop hitting that. Don't chase him. Yes. Kill the turret for me. God, that's so dumb. God, it's so dumb. I hate the stupid gnome so much, but look how good it is. This guy was kind of bad at the game, I'm going to be honest. I don't know why he was... I don't know, he was just playing a Myab deck post, essentially, the death of Myab decks. But, yeah, first one in the bag. Let's go ahead and keep moving. I'll showcase another one. Oh, bit, bit late on the draw. Oh, is it this guy again? Or is this another Myab deck? Uh, we're just going to do this. Ooh, don't miss up the blizzard. There we go. Catch the whole thing. Blizzard into a skeleton army, by the way, completely value. Completely value, because remember, that is a... What is it? Four mana card itself, so... 
Dropping a four mana to sorry, four gold to deal with a four gold is totally fine. Uh, this poor guy doesn't know that his deck is bad now. We're just gonna do this all right away. Because the flame turrets, they're as good as they are, they have their weakness, which is still my least favorite card in the game. Just be better than it was before. That's a bit rough. We'll drop these stitches to help deal with some of the issues that will be caused soon. I didn't mean to. That's fine. I didn't mean to drop that there. Drop this here. I think this push is pretty much dealt with. And I was gonna drop Skeleton Army here to get the chest, but I guess Arthas can take care of it. Sorry, Lord Baron Rivendare can take care of it instead. So if we can actually get this here before the Stitches hits it, and she tanks, funny enough, right? Nah, she's not tanking, but it's good enough. Oh, don't kill my Skeleton Mages. I need those to afflict slow. I, I, my mouse is just putting these things down way too soon. It's fine. We don't get a frost off on the tower. We're using these towers is very big, by the way, which is why I think Arthas, Lord Baron Riven, Baron Rivendare is still strong. Because his frost mages will just put it. But anyway, another Maiev deck for some reason. I'm not really getting a proper chance to showcase the deck, but you know, it's, a win's a win, you know? Let's get another game going, though. Alright, looks like we're about to find another match here. So, there we go. Not a Maya deck yet. Okay. Blood Mage Th I've been seeing a lot of Blood Mage downloads recently, and I have no idea why. I have to resist that urge. I fucking misclicked. It's okay. It's to kill the miner, I swear. Please kill it? Why is he so fast? Alright, pull not the ghost. That's fine. Alright. Drop this. Drop this. He's gonna drop that. We're just gonna kill it. I think this is always worth it. This is good. He's delaying our frost mages. So we'll get there slower. Please, 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 tank for stitches. No! Well, that's fine. I should not have put it that close. That's my bad. I just wanted all the mages to strike. But look, with the mages hitting, the tower has its attack speed greatly reduced. And we won. We already won. Dude, this... This deck is just too easy. You just get one good push and the game's over. Alright, there we go. Let's do, like, two more games or something. Alright. Another game found. I think this one's a bit of a tougher one. I want to showcase the just... Uh, this poor Meeps guy trying out his garbage decks right now at... It's not 3k, but it's like 2500 elo. Come on, like... He got better than... Like, he got up here with these decks? We're just gonna win right away. We already won. I'm not even kidding. The game is literally already over. If she tanks, this game is... Yeah, GG. Push a little bit farther back. GG, bud. I almost don't even want to put this one in. He just he dropped stitches again. We possessed it again. And we fall with the exact same push with the Frost Mages. Slowing the tower. Okay, that was a quick one. Let's do one more. Okay, we found another game. Please don't be Meeps again. I might have to change the title of this video to I Bully Meeps for like five games in a row. Okay. Once again, this is always worth because he dropped a skeleton arm. Oh, I no, I didn't even miss him. I have his beaten up. Beaten up my stitches. But it's not gonna matter. He dropped. I don't know what he's doing. He has no push that can even do damage to my units. Why do you pull the skeletons? He just he just used to pull skeletons. I noticed that actually recently too. Okay, he didn't drop my Ev on my Necromancer, so it lives. It. 
No, oh, don't. Yes, yes. Now attack her. Oh, it's hitting the skeletons. I need to check which side it's. Oh, that was unfortunate. Right into the Maev. That was a fat Maev. AoE. Anyway. She's still there, dude. She's not done. Our tower. I don't think he has units that could do damage to us. I'm serious, like literally any units that could do damage. I don't think any of these could get close enough. That was a good buy up this time. Never mind, it didn't. It didn't, it didn't kill anything. Just drew one of these here. Go get him, girl. Go tank for me so that I could do that. I think. I think a lot of decks are literally going to become safe pilot. Thank you for the name showing up because I was going to forget the name again. Safe pilot with just skeleton army pushes to beat these new towers because she is so far out of range that the tower just can't hurt it. And the skeletons will do the rest of the damage. But yeah, I kind of just bullied Meeps for like five games in a row with this deck, but that's, that's good enough. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys on the next video showcase. Please like and subscribe and all that junk. Goodbye everyone.